Hi, my name is Shannon. Welcome to my channel. And today we'll be doing a 60 minute Earth Day vinyasa flow in celebration of Earth Day. So all of the poses will be mostly non-anthropomorphic type of poses. So all the poses that relate to something in the natural world. So celebrate and give thanks for our planet and our home. So make your way to your mat and let's get started. So start first in a variation of child's pose, rock pose, which is almost basically the same thing. So come on to your knees and then abs ready, hold your chest over, bring your forehead to the mat. And rather than having your hands out in front of you, bring them by your side, by your feet. And we'll take a moment to settle in here. So again, this is basically child's pose, but in honor of Earth Day, we'll call it rock pose. And as you settle into this space, I invite you to feel into your breath. How every time you inhale, your lungs expand against your knees and the tops of your legs. Just a couple more centering breaths. Maybe in honor of Earth Day, give thanks for something, whether it's beautiful blue skies or birds, or you have a favorite animal or a favorite hike or natural place to go. And I invite you to bring that place or that thing or animal to your mind and Dedicate and honor this practice today. We'll just take a couple more breaths. We'll take one more round of breath. And exhale, release. Maybe begin to kind of rock from side to side. I get it, rock, rock pose. <laughs> Starting our practice with how our earth was before there was a bunch of life, right? Just a chunk of rock floating in space. That may or may not be like super scientifically accurate, but you get right. And if you know your neck is a little sore today, I invite you to bring your hands beside your head. As we move into rabbit pose, we'll be rolling on to the tops of our head. So if you want a little extra support, you can bring your hands there now. Otherwise, I invite you to bring your hands to your low back if you're rocking the fine stillness. Either maybe you grab kind of the forearm elbow space or maybe you interlace your fingers. And if you can, bring your head even more closer to your knees. And as you're ready, on the inhale, whether you're supporting your head or your hands are behind, on the inhale, rock your hips up into the air, come on to the crown of your head. Exhale, sit it back down and adjust as needed. Two more times, inhale, lift the hips, roll up. Not putting the shoulders in yet, exhale. And now this time on the inhale, lift and fold. Option to stay here. Or maybe option to bring the arms up and open them. The rabbit pose. Just wanting one of the many features of our planet. One more round of breath here. And gently release the hands and the hips back towards the earth. If your fingers are interlaced, unwind them, place your hands next to your head, and we'll all roll up into Thunderbolt Pose, Vajrasana together, sitting back on our heels. If that's uncomfortable, you can always grab a block and bring it between your feet and sit on that if that feels better. So wherever you're at, take a couple of rounds of breath. If you feel anything else in the neck that needs to be worked out, you can 
we'll knock it side to side or roll around, otherwise just find stillness. One more round of breath. Exhale, release. And rising onto our knees, hands reach towards the sky. Inhale, lift it up, big stretch. And sit it back down, exhale. Twice more. Inhale, lift up towards the sky. And exhale, sit it down. Last time, inhale to lift. And taking our hands down to the mat, exhale, come in to your tabletop pose. Adjust knees underneath hips, hands underneath shoulders, and moving right into our cow and cat. On the inhale, belly drops, chest shine forward, gaze up. And on the exhale, push into all ten fingers, really arch your back, open your chin and your tailbone. Inhale, the Vilasana, cow pose. And exhale, Marj Ariasana, cat pose. One more round of breath. Inhale, push into the tops of your feet as well. Feel that connection with the earth. Exhale. And come back to center. On your next inhale, walk your hands farther forward. Maybe they're on the mat or come off the mat. And then on the exhale, begin to sink your chest down towards the earth, coming into extended puppy dog pose. Maybe your chin is on the mat. Maybe your forehead is on the mat. Imagining if you're a dog owner and that dog stretching out as they're getting up. One more round of breath. Then on the inhale, slowly walk your hands back in a little closer, but not quite underneath your shoulders. Maybe you need to shift your knees up and we'll rock into rising forward. As you're ready, shift your weight forward, drop your hips, shine your chest. Exhale, bring it back towards the tabletop. Inhale, shift forward, shine the chest. Exhale, bring it back just a little bit. And then the last time, sink it down and push into your hands to lift your torso up. <sighs> Rising Bhujangasana Cobra. Maybe you want to get a little more into the neck still here. Or look over your right and left shoulder, whatever feels good. For one more round of breath. Exhale, find stillness. On your next inhale, tuck your toes. And on the exhale, use your lower abs to lift your hips and send them back towards your downward facing dog. Um, so awesome. And for those of you who are dog owners, you've probably seen your dog stretch out like this, hence where the name dog comes from. Maybe you pedal out the feet, maybe you sway side to side, whatever feels good here. Take one more round of breath. Exhale, settle. If you're moving, find stillness. And as you're on your inhale, lift your heels, bend your knees, gaze forward, and step or pop your way to the top of your mouth. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana, flat back. Exhale, fold. Rising all the way up, inhale, sweep your arms up into the sky, forward with the sasana. And exhale, hands come down through center and down to your side in mountain pose, Tadasana. Down down through the feet. Maybe you lift your toes and spread them before placing them back down on the mat, soft knees. Forest tight shoulders melt away from the ears. It seems like a pretty simple pose, just standing. But it actually takes a lot if you really think about having a good posture and being nice and tall, strong and firm. One more out of breath. Exhale, side up. And as you're ready, on the inhale, sweep your arms up into the sky and lift your heels off the mat. Exhale, bring it back down. Twice more. Inhale, lift. 
warming up our feet, pass them down. Inhale, lift and hold here. Top the tailbone, belly nice and strong. One more round of breath. And exhale, lower. Ground down in the left foot, and the sum on the inhale, right knee lifts up into the sky. And then set it down, moving to the other side. Finding some flow, some movement. Inhale, left knee rises. Exhale, down. Shoulders stay away from yours. Inhale. And exhale, drawing up with the hip flexor. Inhale. And exhale. Once more, each side. Last time. And exhale, set everything down. Inhale, arms sweep up towards the sky, soft knees. Exhale, swan, dive it down towards your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Bend your knees, plant your hands, and exhale, step or hop your way back to plank. As you're ready on the inhale, shift your weight forward, keep your elbows nice and close to your page, and exhale, slowly lower all the way down to the mat. Once you're there, untuck your toes, roll your shoulders back, point your elbows back, and lift just your upper chest off the mat in low cobra. Exhale, fold it back down. Twice more. Inhale, roll the elbows and shoulders back as it wraps, it's pulling your shoulders up. And exhale down. And inhale, lift, press into the tops of your feet. And exhale, fold, tuck the toes, and find your way all the way back. You are out of the spinasana downward. Take three rounds of breath. Heels shoot toward the mat. They don't need to reach there, but just try to find their way there. One more round of breath. <sighs> Ground down in the left foot. As you inhale, right leg lifts up into the sky. Three, let it go. And coming into a plank, covering knee to nose. Exhale, crunch it underneath. Two more times. Inhale, extend back. And exhale, crunch underneath. Inhale, extend. And exhale, crunch. Last time, extending here. Inhale. And this time, step your foot outside of your right hand. On the exhale, draw it up and out towards the right as we come into lizard pose. Adjust your hands as needed. If your foot's off the mat and that bothers you, you can wiggle it back on. Otherwise, stay here and get a nice juicy hip stretch. Option to stay on your hands. Maybe you want to bring a block underneath or maybe bring it underneath your elbows. Whatever works for you. Take one more round of breath here, wherever you're at. Menagerie, if you're not already there, come on to your hands, your left hand at least onto the block. Menagerie, I'll mean open the right arm towards the sky. Twisted lizard. Option to drop your back knee here too, if you need a little release. Otherwise, gaze up, push away from the earth. One more round of breath. And cartwheel that down, the hand back down to the mat. Exhale. Inhale, shine your chest. And exhale, draw your foot back to plank. Inhale, shift your weight forward. Exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Untuck your toes and then bring your hands out wide, coming on to your fingertips, spider fingers. Then this time only will use your lower back to lift your chest. Exhale, fold. Press it into the tops of your feet, into your hips. Inhale, use your back to lift. Try to stay light on your fingertips. And exhale, down. And once more, inhale, lift. And exhale, lower, draw your hands back into your chest. Rising cobra, this time lift your entire torso off the mat by pressing into the heel of your hands. And then on the exhale, tuck your toes and lift it up and back. A downward facing ball. 
Big round of breath. <sighs> One more round of breath, taking that to the other side. Ram down in the right foot. As you're ready, on your next inhale, lift the right leg into the, or the left leg, sorry, not the right leg, left leg into the sky. One more round of breath here. And then drawing knee to nose, exhale, shift forward into a plank, tap, and inhale, extend. Twice more, exhale, back arch is kind of like cat, inhale, lift, exhale, Last extension here, and he'll shoot the leg back and then stepping the left leg outside of the left foot or the left hand, left foot outside the left hand. Adjust and settle into lizard pose. Take a round of breath here. Again, option to bring a block underneath your hands if that's available, or come onto your elbows, whatever you need. Option also again to drop the back knee. One more round of breath here. And then ground down in your right hand. And on the inhale, open the left arm into the sky. Maybe you gaze up if that doesn't serve your neck. You can continue to gaze down and just kind of let it hang where it feels good. One more round of breath. On the exhale, slowly cartwheel the hands back to the mat. Shine the chest and he'll press into all ten fingers. Take it back to your plank on the exhale. Inhale, shift your weight forward. Exhale, lower all the way down. Low cobra. Inhale, roll the shoulders back. Lift, press the top of the chest off the mat. And then exhale, tuck the toes and lift the hips up and back, downward. One round of breath. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift the heels, bend the knees, gaze forward, step, or hop your way to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, bow. Inhale, rise all the way up forward, Bahasasana. And exhale, hands come back down to your side. Take a second, adjust. Grow down in your feet. Now adding on to a little bit of leg movement, we'll lift the right knee up and down, and then out and down, and then left. We'll do three times each side. So as ready, weight in your left foot, inhale, right knee lifts up, and exhale, just tap it down, and then open your hip up as you inhale and open it out to the side, and then exhale down. Coming on to the left foot. Left knee rises, and exhale, taps down as you open the hip. Inhale, left knee opens up out to the side, and returns towards the earth. Two more times, inhale, and exhale. Out to the side, inhale, and exhale, down, switch. Left knee lifts straight. Core is still active, belly button drawing in. Last time, right knee lifts out straight. Exhale to tap and open. And then inhale to use your hip flexor and your leg muscles to draw it out and up. The last side, inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale, bring it back down. Inhale, arms sweep up towards the sky. And exhale, fold it towards the earth. Inhale to halfway lift, flat back, Ardha Uttanasana. Bend the knees, plant your hands, and find your way to plank. Inhale, shift your weight forward. Exhale, lower all the way down. Untuck the toes, roll the shoulders and elbows. Rising cobra, lift all the way up. And then tuck the toes, exhale, shoot the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Maybe you release the neck, maybe continue to sway side to side, 
whatever you need. One more round of breath. Round down in the left foot. Right leg lifts up. Inhale three leg it up. Stay here. And now bend your right knee. So maybe you're going to open the hips out. Right knee lifts up towards the sky as your right foot reaches towards your left. Scorpion leg, your three-legged dog. Try to keep your shoulders square. Lift the knee just a little higher. And then as you're really square your hips off again, three-legged dog, reach. And stepping your foot all the way through. Exhale, step your foot between your hands, stay high in your back toes, and we'll rise up to high. Anjani Asana, crescent lunge on the inhale. If you want to make this feel more steady, you can walk your feet out wider a little bit or closer together if you want a little bit more of a balance challenge. Last round of breath. Shoulders melt away from ears. And then I want you to imagine that you're holding the sun in your hands just for a round of breath. Pinkies turn inward. Exhale. And now as you're ready, inhale, open your palms towards the front of the room like you're a cactus. And on the exhale, draw your elbows down. Maybe dip your knee down if you want to go there, opening your chest. And inhale, lifting back up. Twice more. Exhale, cactus arm dip. And inhale, lift. Exhale, dip. Inhale, lift. Hold the sun again in your hands. Energy through the back heel. Last round of breath. And as if you're carrying that sun towards the sunset, towards the horizon, straight arm lower until you need to fold to place your hands on the neck. Step back on the exhale to plank. Inhale, shift your weight forward. And exhale, lower all the way down and stay here. Oh, release. One more round of breath, reconnect. Maybe remember what you're dedicating this class to. And then as you're ready, lift your chest up enough to draw your elbows underneath your shoulders to come into Sphinx pose. So I know a Sphinx isn't technically a real animal, but that's okay. We can do mythical animals too. If you feel any pressure in your low back, squeeze your glutes and you'll feel a slight lifting up to help protect any impingement. One more round of breath. And then I'll already grab out on all 10 fingers. And on the inhale, lift your elbows off the mat, pushing into your hands to come into seal pose. Exhale, lower the elbows. Twice more. Inhale, lift up. Maybe gaze up. And exhale down. One more time. Inhale, lift. And exhale, sphinx. Inhale, roll onto the left side. And on the exhale, draw your right knee up to come into half draw. One round of breath. Now as you're ready, roll back onto the left hip to draw the right leg back. And we'll switch rolling onto the right hip to draw the left hip. We'll do one full cycle of breath from here. Rolling back onto the right hip to draw the left knee back. Last moment here, really push into your elbows to lift the chest. And then exhale, draw your hands back towards your cobra pose as you drop your chest towards the On the inhale, rise in Bhushan Rasana, lift your entire torso up towards the sky. Tuck the toes. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Get to do the lunge series on the other side. So as you're ready, grab it on the right foot. So on the inhale, left leg reaches up into the sky and then bend the knee. Open into your scorpion leg. Three pada auto with the spinach. Three legged dog. Three legged downward facing dog, I should say. 
Really reach and then the up towards the sky. One more out of breath. Stay square in the shoulders. And then square the hips back off. And exhale, step your foot up between your hands and rise up. High crescent lunge on the other side. You can imagine you're holding the sun or maybe the moon if you prefer the night in your hands. You'll feel a slight internal rotation. One more round of breath, send energy through the back heel, lengthen it out. And then turn your palms towards the front of the room and cactus your arms. Maybe dip or maybe just do the arms. Wherever you're at, exhale, draw the elbows down, feel your shoulder blades moving. And inhale, lift. Exhale. So you should feel a contraction in your shoulder muscles. Inhale, lift. And exhale, last time. Inhale, rise back up. Hold the sun or the moon in your hands, or maybe the planet. And then folding, hinging forward as if you're moving towards the horizon until the last possible moment when you fold, you place your hands by your foot. As you're ready, exhale, step back to plank. Inhale, roll forward. Exhale, elbows close to your cage. Lower down, untuck the toes. Inhale, rising, Bhutan Gasana Cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Take a round of breath. Exhale, side up. Inhale, lift the heels, bend the knees, gaze forward, and step, or hop your way to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Rise all the way up. Inhale, reach towards the sky. And exhale, hands for a second. Take a round of breath, reconnect. And maybe drop the hands by your sides if you prefer that. And now we'll only open our legs out to the side. So as you ready, find your weight in your feet. I like to keep my hands just apart center for a second. And then begin to turn your right foot out. And we'll lift the right foot three times sequentially before shifting to the left side. So as you ready, left foot nice and firm. Inhale, right knee lifts up to the side. Exhale, just tap it down. Don't put all of your weight into it. Just tap the foot. And then inhale, lift back up. Really feel your muscles underneath working. Exhale down. Last time, inhale, lift and hold. Shoulders away from the ears. One more round of breath. Exhale, release and square the hips off again as we take it to the other side. So as you're ready, bring your left foot out and inhale. Use your leg and your core and your hip flexor to pull that leg up. Exhale, release. Just tap the toe. Twice more. Inhale. And exhale. Last time. Inhale, really lift. Hold here. Observe if there are any differences in the sides, no judgment, just observation. And exhale, release, square off the hips. As you draw down in the heels, next inhale, arms sweep up towards the sky and swan dive down towards the Inhale, halfway lift, bend your knees. Plant the hands and find your plank. Inhale, shift your weight forward. Exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Rising cobra, lift your chest up. And this time, stay here. Maybe you stay, maybe you look over your right shoulder by swiveling your hips off to the left. Or maybe you look over the left. Just take a few rounds of movement here. Doesn't have to look pretty. It has to feel good. If you're moving and grooving, come back to your center. Inhale. And then slowly use your triceps to lower your chest back to the mat. And come onto your forehead, bringing 
your hands by your sides, like you're going towards how they were in rock. Take a second, reconnect with the breath. Last round of breath. Exhale, side out. As you're ready, we'll lift just the arms, but first turn the hands in towards your hips and towards your legs. And then as you're ready, like we did in Cobra, that pulling motion of lifting your chest, lift your chest, and then lift your arms. So try not to use your arms to lift you up but use your lower back muscles to pull and hold. And then your shoulder muscles, bring your arms up. Exhale, release. We'll do that two more times. So again, lift first, and then the arms join and extend. And exhale, release. Last time, inhale. And exhale. This time, lifting the legs as your arms can stay down. Maybe lift the chest or maybe keep on the back. Inhale, lift the legs using your glutes. Exhale, set it down. Inhale, lift the legs. Shoulders might lift slightly, but that's okay. Exhale, set it down. Inhale, lift the legs. And exhale, down. And you probably guessed it. Now we're going to lift everything. As you're ready, inhale, lift the shoulders, lift the arms, lift the legs, full locust pose, and exhale, fold. Twice more. Inhale, lift, and exhale, fold. Inhale, lift, and hold here for two more rounds of breath. Last round of breath. And exhale, release. Bring your hands back by your chest, and we'll rise up into tabletop. Nice and slow, take your time to get there. If you need to shift something out in the low back, maybe you push your hips back slightly and sway side to side, whatever feels good. And then as you're ready, come back towards Barmanasana, tabletop pose. We'll move into bear pose or bear crawl pose. So as you're ready, tuck your toes. And on the exhale, hover your knees off the mat about an inch or two. Two more rounds of breath here. Just a nice isometric hold. Nice flat back. Last round of breath. And then as you're ready, pulse the knees out. And back in. Two more times. Pulse the knees up. And back in. Pulse the knees up. And from here, seven down on the mat. Bring your big toes together. And then let your knees slide out as wide as feels okay. Coming into frog pose. So your legs look like little frog legs. And then maybe you walk your hands forward. Or maybe you come down onto your elbows. If that feels okay. So the purpose of this pose, it's not like child's pose where your hips are back. Um, it's your hips are moving straight down towards the mat. So you'll feel a nice big stretch. If that doesn't feel good in the feet, you can also open. You don't have to touch your big toes. You can kind of bring your tail wider if that feels better. Again, do what feels good in your body. Not necessarily trying to mirror exactly what I'm doing or what you think yoga should look like. One more round of breath here. And then as you're ready, stay on your elbows. We'll be moving into dolphin pose. So as you're ready, come back onto your toes. Lift back up. And then maybe you stretch your legs shifting your hips into the sky like you're in downward facing dog but you're in dolphin pose maybe you walk your feet closer in or closer out whatever feels good take one more round of breath here
And then as you're ready, slowly begin to walk your feet back out towards the forearm plank, adding a little movement here. And then exhale, walk them back in. Just twice more. Inhale to walk back out, invite the burn in the shoulders. Walk it back in. And walk it back out. Take one more round of breath here. And now option, if you want to come onto your hands and press directly up, you can. Otherwise, you can press one hand and then the other, which is what I'm going to do to come into plank. One more round of breath. Inhale, shift your weight forward. Exhale, lower halfway down. Untuck the toes. Lift the entire body off the mat into upward facing dog. And shift it back to downward facing dog. Release. Take one more round of breath. Ground down in the left foot. Inhale, right leg lifts up towards the sky. Exhale, step it all the way through. And then back up. Inhale, and then open here into sport. Square off the hips, inhale. Exhale, step it up. And draw back, inhale. And open to sport. Last time, square the hips. And step it up and spin. As you're ready, inhale, circle the arms up. High crescent lunge. Open the palms out. Exhale, cactus it down. And inhale to lift. Grab your sun or your moon or whatever back in your hands. And then as you're ready, exhale, hinge it forward and hold. Option to stay here. Or option to move into half moon pose. So as you're ready, maybe you lean even further forward, coming onto your back toes. Maybe your both hands come to the mat or just your right hand comes to the mat. Kicking your left leg into the sky. Open your hips towards the long edge of the mat. And then maybe you want to bring a block underneath your hand if that helps. And maybe you open the right or the left arm towards the sky. Lifting the left leg high into the air. Maybe you continue to gaze down. Maybe you gaze up. Try to push actively away from here. And one more round of breath. And then slowly square your hips back off to the mat. And step your foot back. Coming back into our lunge. Inhale, high crescent lunge, lift up. And exhale, take it to your plank and move through your flow. You choose how you want to do your vinyasa. You can go through rising cobra or low cobra or upward facing dog. Fall meet on the exhale and downward facing dog. Take a round of breath here. We do that on the other side. Right foot grounds in the mat. Inhale, left leg lifts up. And doing the step through back to scorpion. Exhale, step it through. And inhale, send it back and open up. Exhale, step your foot through. Use your core to get it there. And then inhale, open. And step the foot through and stay. Rise up. High press apart. Find whatever you want in your hands. And then open the palms towards the front. One cactus pulse. Exhale, dip. And then inhale, lift. Find the moon and the sun back in your hands. Internal rotation of the babies. And hinge it forward. Maybe you stay here. Or maybe you rock onto your back toes to help your hands get to the mat. Again, with or without the block. Lift the back leg into the sky. Begin to open the hips out towards the long edge of your mat. And then maybe you stay here, or maybe you open the right arm into the sky. And gaze can be down or straight. Just try to move the shoulder away from the ear. Half moon, heart on grassana. One more round of breath. And slowly begin to square the hips off on the exhale. And step the back foot. Inhale, arms rise up. Exhale, hands plant. 
and find your way back to plank and move through your twelve. Making downward facing dog. Long arm of breath. As you're ready, inhale with the heels. Then exhale, find your way to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Then exhale, bow. Rise all the way up, inhale. And exhale, hands drop down to the side. You have a feeling you know where we're going. So I'll turn towards you so you can see me going into tree pose. It wouldn't be Earth Day without doing tree pose. So as you're ready, ground down in your left foot. Begin to come into the weight on that foot, drawing the right knee up. And maybe reach down to help the foot get there. Coming in to root shots and now tree pose. Hands can be here. Hands can reach up towards the sky, or maybe if this is too much for you, you can bring your foot, the sole of your foot, towards your low calf, or even kind of like tripod it. So wherever you are at, just try not to have it on your knee, because I can kind of push your knee out. Wherever you're at, whether it's up high or down low, one more round of breath. And then as you're ready, release, and we'll come back to standing. Grounding down in the other foot. This time, left knee lifts up. Maybe reach down to help your foot get up there, although we were practicing the muscle lift earlier. Find the weight in your foot and the balance. And you can stay here. Arms can lift. If you lose your balance, like I always just did, just find it again. Maybe you want to dance. I don't know, do like a little root dance for all you, you Marvel fans. Or you just hold it here. One more round of breath. Maybe you close your eyes or look up. All the options. Exhale with control. Release. Bring it back down. Take a round of breath. Exhale, side out. And soft knees. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Swan, dive down towards the earth. Exhale. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale, bend the knees. Plant the hands. Find your vinyasa flow. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Just one breath as we ground down in the left foot. Next inhale, right leg reaches up into the sky. Bend your knee open, scorpion like your dog. And then as you bring your knee right outside your right elbow. And then swing your left foot, or your right foot up towards the left, and then drop the knee. Coming in to pigeon pose, shift your weight back, and settle in to Akapadaraja Apalthadasana. <laughs> Long name. If this doesn't serve you, you can come down, roll on your hip, and then bring the right ankle over the left knee. And if that's still a lot, if you're feeling a lot in the hips, you can bring it up in something like this. So wherever you're at, taking a couple more rounds of breath here, either you can stay high or come down onto your chest, your elbows, wherever you're at. <sighs> Lots of variations to get into the pose. Take one more round of breath. You're on your chest, your elbows slowly. Make your way back onto your hands, or if you're on your back or a seat, come back through plank. And we'll meet in downward facing dog. As you're ready, inhale, lift the hips, send the leg back in, three legged dog, and we'll meet in downward facing dog. Take a round of breath here, and then we'll take it to the other side. Left knee lifts up, open, scorpion leg your dog. One round of breath. And then drawing on the exhale, the left knee to the left elbow, drawing the foot out up to the right, or coming down onto your seat or your back, and settling in. Whatever variation of pigeon 
serves you today. And you can stay up or you can shimmy your way on down. We'll take about four more rounds of this. Made into pigeon pose. I feel like pigeons, for those of you who live in cities, is one of the more ubiquitous animals, right? Uh, wildlife that you see. Probably can be a little bit of a nuisance sometimes. <laughs> Take one more on the ground. And then slowly as you're ready, Make your way, if you're on your back, come through a plank and you can move directly into Adho Pusmanasana, do a vinyasa. Otherwise, tuck your back toes, lift the hips, send it back directly to three like a dog, and we'll all make a downward facing dog. Just the right of breath here. Back so side out. Inhale, and then exhale, the bum forward. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale back. Rising all the way up, inhale, reach up towards the sky, and exhale, hands, heart, center. I'm going to cue, face you to cue this. Moving into eagle pose, Garudasana. Ground down in the left foot, and begin to lift the right knee up. And then turn it out to the side like we were doing when we were trying to lift it. Option to stay here or option and just sit your hips back, coming into four left square legs, or option to bring your knees together and as you sink to hook your ankle foot around your other calf. Maybe you stay here with the arms or maybe you bring your arms out, try to catch your balance. And then maybe you put your left arm over your right. Coming into full guard asana pose. Last round of breath. Slowly unwind, lift it up, and unwind. It's really hard to cue the opposite of that since like it's opposite arms to legs. And then I'm opposite of you, so we'll do it what we can. As you're ready, the left knee rises up. Either you find your four square legs and sit back from here, or maybe you cross the knees completely over each other and hook your foot around your other calf. And then as you're ready, inhale, open the arms. And this time, right arm crosses over left. To maybe find your full eagle pose. Again, if you fall out of this, it's perfectly okay. Just one more out of breath, whatever you're at. And then as you're ready, release. <sighs> Side out. And then as you're ready, inhale, arms sweep up to the sky. And we'll sit back momentarily into chair pose on the exhale. Now it's not quote unquote nature, but it's just to get to where we're going. Stay here, and then as you swing your arms back and down behind you like they were in locust pose. So imagine you can imagine like you're holding something in your hands to keep that internal rotation. Really pull away, and then as you're ready, begin to lift the heels off the back, coming into what I've heard called bird drinking raindrops, which I just thought was beautiful. So we're gonna go with it. <laughs> Take one more round of breath here, invite the shaking. And exhale, fold, release, forward, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, begin to bend your knees. Enough to plant your hands, but we won't move in through a flow. As you begin to walk your feet right behind the heel of your hand, coming into crow pose. So if you're not in a crow yet, I encourage you to just stay here and practice. Hands are firmly on the mat. Lift the heels so that you're driving the knees in towards the armpits. And just hold here. Maybe you lean into one and lift one and then the other. 
wherever you're at. If crow is part of your practice, begin to lean it forward as you maybe come off of one foot and then the other, maybe both. Gazing a little bit in front of you, wherever you're at. One more round of breath. And then with control, set it back down and come onto your knees. Your release. Coming back into Thunderbolt pose, Madrasana. Sariata. As you're going to inhale, arms lift up. Turn the palms out. Exhale, cast the arms open. Open the chest. Inhale, lift. Exhale, hands come back down. And then as you really inhale, rise on. Turn your arms, sweep up. Turn the palms up. Practice the arms really squeeze the glutes to push your hips forward. Try to feel this more in the chest than the lower back. And then inhale, come back up. Stay high on your knees. Let the hands come down. We'll move into camel pose. If you know that's part of your practice, if you don't, I encourage you to tuck your toes underneath you. It brings your heel a little bit closer. And then if you want, arms can sweep up on the inhale. And then on the exhale, just reach back with the right hand towards the right heel. And then inhale up. And then exhale, left hand to left heel. And you can stay there, just going from side to side. Or maybe you bring your hands to your sacrum, this part of your low back, bringing the heels of your hand onto your sacrum, fingers pointing down, and maybe you just work on the hips pushing out, chest opening up. Or maybe you come in to the full expression of Ustrasana camel pose. Two rounds of breath. Let's do it. Now, as you're ready, if you're in camel, bring your hands back to your sacrum to help you up. And we'll sit it down into Thunderbolt just for a minute. Take a second, let your body adjust. One more round of breath. And then slowly as you're ready, let your hands come back to the mat. Lift your heels. Settle in to Dharmanasana Thun or tabletop pose. Just maybe take a couple cat and cows. Melt the spine out a bit. Maybe sway side to side. And then as you're ready. Sit your hips down off to one side, and I'll face you, but just face whatever direction on the mat you want. Coming into butterfly pose, bringing the soles of the feet together. They can be far apart, they can be close. If you have blocks, you can place them underneath to help support, or you can sit on a block. Lots of options with props. Maybe you flutter your legs a bit here. Just take a couple rounds of breath. I wanted to close out, or kind of close out, near the end of a practice with butterfly, because I really like the imagery of it, right? You have a caterpillar that goes into a cocoon and emerges as what looks like a completely different insect, which is pretty incredible. I'm also a documentary nature documentary nerd, so. Nature is great. Studied environmental science. <sighs> Let's take a few more rounds of breath here. Maybe think of one way that you would hope to transform this year. You know, spring is also this idea of transformation. Last round of breath here. And then I'll turn you. Probably are still facing the top of your mat. <clears throat> I'm going to roll back into happy baby. If you don't like the roll back, just make your way there. Otherwise, 
grab your big toe with your pointer and your thumb and just roll it on back and open up into Ananda Balasana. Happy day pose. So I know I said we're not going to do any other morbid poses, but uh, here you are. Here is the human pose. And again, closing out with this idea of the butterfly and the transformation is that humans are part of Earth as well. I think it's sometimes easy to forget that, right? When we live in houses with electricity and water and all of that. And so sometimes it's easy to forget that we are also part of nature. We are an animal, we're a mammal. And so reconnecting with this idea of how can you live a little more gently with our earth, right? It's our home and if we don't treat it well and conserve resources, then we can damage the what gives us life, right? And so take a moment here and think about how you can live a little more gently. with our world. This idea of being a baby, I think of a, a child, I have a young niece, and just seeing the curiosity, right, of the world and the why, and why this and why that, and why is the sky blue, and I mean, I studied some form of science, right, and it's easy to forget about the magic of the world, rather than just like, oh, it's the light reflecting, refracting off of the, you know, X, Y, Z, and so... I guess I can maybe tap into that childlike wonder at the world around us. And then, as you're ready, you can release, bring your knees into your chest. One last pose for you here. Let your feet come to the mat, and you can move into Shavasana if you're ready. I'm going to move into fish pose, which can be a lot on the cervical spine. So if your neck is feeling anything at all right now, don't do this. <laughs> Otherwise, as you're ready, come on. I like to come onto my elbows, and then I drop my head back to come onto the crown of my head, and then I adjust. So you can stay here with your feet up. It's a little less pressure. Or maybe you extend your legs out and come into the full expression. If you want to practice the neck, but don't want to be completely on it, you can also push in your elbows and just have your head back. There's a little more arm work for you, but it's never a bad thing, right? So we'll just take three rounds of breath here. Take one more round of breath. we the opposite in our neck, what we did in rabbit pose at the beginning. It's a method to my madness. <laughs> and then as you're ready, if you're in fish, Matsyasana pose. We'll push from your elbows to so tuck your chin back into your chest and lie down, Shavasana. Move anything out of the way that you need. Let's just settle in here for a moment. If you like to have your arms up over you can. Yeah. One hand on your chest and one on your stomach. Let's take five to eight more rounds of breath. And again, think of one thing that you're grateful for with the natural world and one way you can live a little more gently. Maybe it's shorter showers, maybe you set a timer and if you take 10 minute showers, set it for nine. Maybe you ride your bike more, whatever it can be.
Last round of breath here. Open mouth, big sigh out. <sighs> That's where I invite small movement into your body. Maybe you wiggle your wrists around or bunch of what your legs, whatever you need. If you want to stay in Shavasana, you can. Otherwise, you can roll up to come onto your side first. If you like to close out class in the seat. You can just sit in Sukhasana, I mean, into lotus pose. You don't really do any type of flower poses, so I guess it's the closest we can get. A couple of rounds of breath here. Just do a check in with your body. How do you feel? Different. Bring your hands to heart center. And we'll close out with an OM because it is the sound of the universe. And we are celebrating our world and our universe today. So as you're ready, just exhale all your old breath out. Inhale the breath. And on the exhale, you'll release an O. Oh. Oh. Thank you for sharing this practice with me. Lighten me loves the light in me. Namaste.